Good day, good day everyone and once again we're back together and uh, this time we'll be looking at simultaneous equations. So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family, uh, you know, uh, hit that notification bell just so that you are notified every time that we're posting a new lesson. All right, and uh, of course you can get in touch with us, uh, our email address info at mlungisingosi.co.za and of course, and all our social media. Um, in this case, I, I want to just say thank you uh, to those of you that wished me well on my 40th birthday. Thank you so much to all of you. All right, now let's get right into it. Okay, so we're looking at simultaneous equations. And of course, in grade 11, you're going to look at quadratic uh, simultaneous equations. So in this case, uh, let's take our first example. So they give us a f uh, an example where we've got x plus y is equal to 2 and x squared plus y squared is equal to 52. All right, now let's try and solve for that. That's our very first example. Now, the first thing when you're uh, dealing with um, uh, quadratic or rather simultaneous equations is that you're going to always take the simpler equation, all right, and, and find the subject of the formula. Now, this is the simpler equation. It's the linear equation between the two. Can you see this one has got squares in it? It's a quadratic, okay? So in this case, what I'm going to do is take the linear equation. Let's call this one equation one. So x plus y is equal to two. Let's call that equation one. And let's call the other one equation two. X plus y squared is equal to 52. Now the important thing in, in uh, a simultaneous equation is that you must always communicate what you are doing, right? So now I'm going to say from equation one. Can you see? From equation one, I am now going to make y the subject of the formula. So y is equal to 2 minus x. So what I simply did was to take x to the other side, and of course it becomes negative. So I've got to, uh, y is equal to 2 minus x. I can call that equation 3 uh, in this case. Remember, I have derived equation 3 from equation 1. Okay. Now, then what am I going to do? you substitute the equation that you've made the subject of the formula out of, right? And please, when you're uh, making the subject of the formula, try to um, choose the subject of the formula such that you avoid uh, having fractions. But it, there, there are other times where you can't. We'll see that later, right? So I'm going to substitute equation 3. Now, you can't uh, uh, substitute that back into equation one because it's basically the same equation, right? So substitute equation three into equation two, okay? So everywhere I see y, I'm going to substitute two minus x. So that's going to be x squared plus, can you see we've got y squared there? So instead of y, I'm going to put two minus x squared, right? And this is equal to 52. All right, now let's try and solve. So we've got x squared plus, of course, you're going to use your FOIL method in this case. And for those of you who've seen me do this, uh, so um, remember when you square bracket, you can say this is 2 squared, which is 4, right? And you can say x squared, that's x squared. To find the middle term, you say this one. 2 multiplied by negative x, that's negative 2x, times 2, right? So that will be minus 4x. You can use the full method, ladies and gents, to try and get all of that. Um, you will ultimately get to the same answer. All right, now we're going to take this as a quadratic equation, of course, and put it in standard form. So where are my like terms? So I've got x squared and x squared here. That will give me 2x squared. Okay, I've got only one x term, right? So that's going to be minus 4x. And I have got uh, 4. And if I take that 52 to the other side, it becomes negative, right? 
So in this case, that will become minus uh, 48. So that's minus 52 plus 4. That will give me minus 48. And this is equal to 0. Now, I want you to note in this case, before I start factorizing, what I'm going to do, I can see that all of these are multiples of 2. So I can divide by uh, 2 throughout. So that's going to be x squared minus 2x minus 24. This is equal to 0. Now, ladies and gents, once again, my coefficient of x squared, or by the way, uh, I also divided by 2 on the right-hand side, but you, you remember that 0 divided by 2 should still give us 0, right? So in this case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to look for factors of 24 such that when I subtract them, uh, give me 2. Are you already thinking about those? Right, I'm thinking 6 and 4, right? So x and x, um, 6 times 4 gives us 24. And of course, uh, 6 minus 4 will give us uh, a 2, right? So in this case, I once again say, well, we've got a negative sign. It means the brackets have got different signs, right? So um, in this case, the bigger product takes the sign of the middle term. So that's going to be 6x. I'm going to have 4x. So 6 times x gives me 6x here. 4 times x gives me 4x there, right? And in this case, uh, it means 6x must be negative in order for the middle term to be negative. So this one will become negative and that one is positive. Okay, so if you don't know what I'm talking about, please have a look at my video on factorization. All right, and that should uh, sort you out. Right, so x is equal to 6 or x is equal to negative 4. Now we've got two values for x. Right, now, remember we're solving simultaneously. It means we are trying to solve to get two um, uh, solutions or rather uh, two variables, right? In this case, x and y. So to solve for y, I'm going to take my solutions, right? And I'm going to substitute them back into equation 3. Remember, equation 3 tells us about y. So I'm going to say, I'm going to substitute x is equal to 6 and x is equal to negative 4 into equation 3, right? Remember, equation 3 was y is equal to 2 minus x, but where I see x in this case, that's going, I'm going to put the 6, right? And then for the other one, y is equal to 2 minus, remember, it's minus a negative 4, right? So in this case, that's y is equal to 2 minus 6. That will give us negative 4. Or y is equal to 2 minus a negative 4. So this will be 2 plus. Remember, negative times a negative will be a positive. So in this case, that will be 2 plus 4. That will give me 6. So those are my two answers for that question. Okay, right. I hope that you got that. So the thing about simultaneous equations is to always communicate what you are doing. Right. I want us to take, a, you know, just another example. Right. Um, now, let's say just for um, a second example, we've got x squared minus 2yx plus um, 2x minus y squared, which is equal to 0. And for our other equation, we've got 2x minus y, which is equal to 1. All right. Now, we want to solve that simultaneously, right? Now, what I said to you is... We're going to take uh, one of the equations, call it equation one. So I'm going to take that and call it equation one. Let me take that and call it equation two. I said to you, identify the simpler equation, right? Clearly, in this case, equation two is the simpler equation. It's the linear equation. It doesn't have squares, right? And then you find the subject of the formula. Now, it doesn't matter which one you make the subject of the formula out of. Just remember, try to take the one that will not give you 
any fraction, right? There are times when you can't avoid that, right? But if you can, take the one that will not give you fractions. Now look at this one, 2x, right? There's a coefficient in front of x, so I'm going to need to divide by 2 at some point, which will give me a fraction, right? But can you see that y has got uh, just a, uh, you know, a coefficient of 1? So let me rather make y the subject of the formula. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take y to the other side and I'm going to take the 1 to the other side, right? When I take y to the other side, it will become positive, right? So 2x, okay? Uh, all right, let's remove that. So 2x minus 1, so when I take the 1 to the other side, it also changes sign, is equal to y. And that becomes my equation 3. Right, so in this case, wherever I see y, I'm going to put 2x minus 1. Now let's substitute. So I'm going to say, uh, actually I was supposed to say here, from equation 2, right, there we've got equation 3, right? So in this case, now I'm going to substitute equation 3 into, now remember, I can't substitute it into equation uh, 2 because that's, the, that's where it comes from, right? So I'm going to substitute equation 3 into equation 1, right? So wherever I see y, I'm going to substitute. So x squared minus 2 times, then we've got a y there, right? So where I see a y, I put 2x minus 1, okay? Remember, there's still an x there, so it means there's an x on the other side. And then plus 2x minus y squared, so that would be minus 2x minus 1, all squared, and this is equal to 0, right? So now, let's try and solve for that, so that's x squared. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to take this 2x uh, and put it, I mean, this x here, okay? So, uh, remember that multiplication is said to be commutative, Right? meaning that you can order things around and it's still the same um, you know, product. So if I say 2 times 3, that would be the same as 3 times 2. So if I take that x and put it here, I have changed nothing about the equation. Right. So this will become negative 2x times 2x, that will give me minus 4x squared, and then negative 2x. So remember I said negative 2x times 2x, that will give me negative 4x, negative 2x times negative 1, that will give me positive 2x, okay, plus another 2x here, okay, and minus, now remember, I am going to just try and expand that bracket, and I did say to you, right, we can take this one, and um, remember, all we simply do, we are going to uh, just simply substitute there, or, or rather, so 2x squared, that will give me 4x squared. And I said 2x times negative 1, that will give us negative 2x times 2, right? So that will give us minus 4x, okay? And negative 1 squared will give us 1, okay? Right, I'm trying to show you a simpler way of expanding, you know, uh, when you square a bracket. Um, in this case, so we took uh, 2x squared, that gave us 4x squared, and I said for the middle term, you always take this multiplied by that, so 2x times negative 1, which gives me negative 2x times 2, right, so that gives me minus 4x, and of course, for the last one, that would be negative 1 squared, which is 1, and that's how we got to that number. Right, now let's try and uh, simplify this as much as possible. I've got x squared uh, minus 4x squared, so this will give me negative 3x squared, right? 1 minus 4 will give me negative 3. And then I've got 2x plus 2x, that will give me plus 4x, right? 
Now remember, I must, uh, I must uh, um, multiply the negative into the bracket. So that will be minus 4x squared plus uh, negative times negative 4, uh, uh, 4x. So it means everything inside the bracket changes sign, right? Plus 4x and that would be minus 1 and this is 0, right? So now let's try and uh, solve for this. So I've got x squared terms there. That's minus 3x squared and minus 4x squared. That will give me negative 7x squared. Okay, I've got a 4x and a 4x there. That will give me 8x. And of course, I've got minus 1, which is equal to 0. So I've got 7x squared minus 8x plus 1. And this is equal to 0. Now, can we factorize this? Of course, factors of 7 and factors of 1, such that when I add them, give me 8. I think that should be quite simple. That would be 7 over 1, and that would be 1 and 1, right? Uh, in this case, what does it mean? It means that my brackets have got the same sign, right? Why? Because our constant is positive. So that would be 7x and 1. That would be x and 1. So in this case, my brackets are the same. And what is the sign inside my bracket? It's the one of the middle term. So in this case, that will give us 7x is equal to 1. Or we've got x is equal to 1. And so x is equal to 1 over 7. Now, you must be careful, ladies and gents. You know, you can get satisfied out of this and think, hey, I've got the answer. But remember, we are solving simultaneously, which means we now need to find the value for y, right? So I am going to substitute x is equal to 1 over 7 and x is equal to 1 into equation 3, right? So remember, we had 2x minus 1. So that is 2 times x, 1 over 7. x is 1 over 7. Minus 1 is equal to y. Or 2 times our x is 1 here. 1 minus 1 is equal to y. So in this case, uh, 2 times uh, uh, 1 over 7, that should be 2 over 7 minus 1, which is equal to y, or 2 times 1 minus 1, which will give us 1, is equal to y. You can write it the other way, y is equal to 1. Now, um, you know, when dealing with fractions, what you want to do, um, you know, when you've got a number like 1, for instance, uh, to make it easy for yourself, so 2 over 7, our fraction has a denominator of 7. So how can I make 1 into a fraction with a denominator of 7. So do you agree with me? 7 over 7 would be 1, right? Okay, so the denominators are the same. So I can actually just simply add or subtract the numerators, right? So it means that y would be equal to 2 minus 7. So that would be negative 5 over the denominator, which is uh, 7 in this case. All right. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Okay, uh, I want to just give you one that you're going to try on your own. Of course, uh, we are always going to try and give as much examples on this as possible, right? Um, right, I want to just give one which you can try. So the third one, and please just comment with the answer. Uh, so let's take 3x minus y is equal to 2. And um, that would be the first equation, right? So let's have 2x plus y and 3x minus 2y, which is equal to 0. All right, so please work this out and tell me what you get as your final answer. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.